Paint Swap coming in from yeah, yeah. War Gods. Because having it in Aurelia in a 2v1 lane, she can't um, go against or at least farm safely against a Gragas and Ezreal. As for the Karthus, if JLC has enough ability power, in my experience, um, level 1 or level 2, he can use his Lay Waste, that's the Q, to farm safely. Yeah, and yeah. they didn't utilize it, so. And maybe that's one of the reasons also why they kind of fell off. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we were all expecting that lane swap over for JLC, but they didn't go for it. This time, maybe we won't see something as cheesy as Game 1. <laughs> yes. And there's the Aurelia this time of for course. JLC. I was actually um, predicting this because War Gods do have the privilege of the first pick and nobody buy out the Aurelia. Yeah. So JLC now has a hand on to this Aurelio. Yeah. Maybe yep. Aurelio is like the uh, catalyst yeah, for, winning. for winning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we both know that JLC and TG are very strong top laners and they yes. both know how to use Aurelio quite well. So this should be scary again on TG's side but the only disadvantage here is that being the first pick now, TG might have something in store for JLC to bring down Aurelio. So Scion maybe. Yeah. Ooh. Or um, uh, the game before, a top lane LeBlanc. Yeah, 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 that was very surprising. <laughs> it's actually effective though. I yeah. mean, was against I can't remember a uh, a top player who can't um, get deal close. damage back. Yeah. yeah, get close, something like that. Now I can see mm, there is a hover over the Lulu Mineski locking in the Morgana and the LeBlanc. That can be a mid lane, top lane, or <laughs> sorry, <laughs> actually at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Synerg okay. Synergy is real, people. Synergize, no scratch, yeah. guys. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> All right, so back to what I was saying. I got caught off guard there. All right. Yeah, same. All right, so again, I was talking a while ago. Morgana can go into the top lane, mid lane, or even a support. Most likely the support. Yeah, it's and actually interesting that they decided to lock these two champions in first. I think they're confident that Yume can get going with the block again this time. And Morgana is also very strong. Yeah. I think it's also smart to take that um, Morgana away from Stronger because Stronger has been using uh, Morgana Ooh. quite frequently but that's a Wukong and the Karma it's actually wow. not a bad composition coming in from yeah. War Gods they do have the synergy yeah. from the Karma's speed yes. boost to give Wukong more of a gap closer same with JLC and then of course there's the shield for protection and her Q's uh, empowered Q's rather do a ton of damage yeah, and AoE um, secondary pop yeah, but, that's actually true. Though, yes. at the same time now, what is showing us with the Sejuani, there it is, and the Morgana is that they also have a lot of counter-engage um, options as well. So this should be very interesting in a team fight. Who will come on top? Is it the team that goes first, or is it the team that counteracts the one who moves first? Yes. So this should be quite interesting. But with this Wukong, I'm really expecting that Ravain will go for early aggression because if not, Wukong can scale badly into yeah. the mid game and late game compared to a Sejuani, or yeah. rather against a Sejuani in this game. It was a hover over. Maybe the... we'll see a Yasuo. Maybe. <laughs> to help yeah. that speed. It's actually my, not a bad choice to yeah. get a Yasuo, but I don't think a Karma support. Actually, Karma support is good, but. We'll yeah, I think see. we saw that. I'm not sure if it was yesterday. Where there was ex oh stronger, mm. stronger used yeah. karma support yesterday with the snipes. I think Vyy was also using an Ezreal. The poke was insane, so we won't be surprised if Stronger brings out the karma support again. All right, Ooh, so a Graves too. Predicting there was a hover over the area, but they did lock in, so it might actually be a karma support. Yeah. All right, it so this be is quite interesting. Bad. Pick coming in from War God. They're a very mobile team as well. Ari is a very fast mage, especially with the speed. Bonus or Q, that's also a Valkyrie for Corky. They're a very fast team right now. There's also a lot of poke potential, a lot of all in potential. It looks like a stronger team composition this time for yes. War Gods. But looking at War Gods team composition, they're more on to having some utility in their clashes and then oh Ooh, I okay. think he's trolling with us. <laughs> it's actually not a bad pick. Oh wow, yes, there it is. is. Alright, it's not the Yorick. It's not actually a bad pick for the jungle. jungle. It can solo the dragon levels you without any help or a top lane actually it's not bad as well yeah. having that ultimate can counter out uh, Aurelia's burst she does have a good amount of damage spike when she activates that hidden style and if she actually kills someone with that Yorick can just 
use his ultimate and let them live for a few more seconds. Yeah, actually. this is actually what I meant when I was saying TG probably had something under his sleeve for Mineski not to ban the Aurelia or get the first pick on it. I knew that TG had something to face one of his own favorite champions and this should be very interesting seeing GLC and TG fight now. This is actually a dilemma for War Gods. If they do decide to go in for a lane swap, GLC can't farm against EXO and Noel, mm. and then TG can just yeah. spam out his ghouls That's and true. that can farm for him. So it's another lane swap dilemma here coming yes. in for War both gods. teams. And looking at the composition back again to War Gods, they do have a lot of lane dominance composition and then some utility in terms of team fights and objectives. But as for Mineski, again, getting in that assassin type of champion for Yume, he has been very playing very well with those kinds of um, yeah. uh, genre of champions as assassins. Yeah, and especially considering it's an Ari to Animat ah, sorry, Ari to LeBlanc matchup, usually people would say that it's very difficult to fight a LeBlanc when you're in Ari, basically because of the distortion. So mobile, can dodge all of your skill shots. The only thing that you can't dodge is the Foxfire, but you can't get out of range. So it's a very scary matchup. Maybe Ravain will help out Yume, like you said early on during the laning phase. Early aggression for Ravain will definitely be important. We failed to see that earlier in game one just because, well, there was so much lane dominance that Ravain got confused. Do I go top? Do I go bot? It was very confusing for him. Also, VAY did get in that Wu uh, sorry Wukong, um, Corky ADR. This means that War Gods looking in to get, like I've said again, early aggression and then try to win the game from that. Just yeah. keep rolling, as as yeah. it were. Yeah. But if they do not, you know, keep it rolling. Neski has a better composition for the late game. Graves so tanky early on, and when he gets his items, he is a wrecking ball. <laughs> yeah, to go against. And then, initiation-wise, if you could look at the uh, compositions themselves, there's the Cyclone coming in from um, Ravain here, and then there's the Charm and JLC's Stun, but that's most likely it. As for uh, Mineski, they have the Glacial Prison, they have the Soul Shackle, so much amount of Engage, and then if some of their Engages go wrong, or if, for example, Exos being uh, bursted down, he has his items already, put in the TG Ultimate onto him, yes. just, uh, even if he dies, he he responds yeah, as a, a ghost, yeah, yeah, as a ghost, and he can just deal enough damage to possibly get a a shut or shutdown kill or more kills onto the yeah. members of War Gods. Yes, that is true. So very scary team composition coming in from both teams, but this should be definitely giving us this should definitely give us a very exciting game two of the final. So let's just go over to the watch and win promo again that you guys have been waiting for. Let's look at the mechanics one more time. So let's just to go over it. We will again show you guys the mechanics. So just to remind you guys, again, us shoutcasters will be giving the go signal. When we do give the go signal, all you guys have to do is go over to the Pro Gaming Series Facebook page, sign up on that registration form within five minutes, and then after five minutes, we'll say it's closed. At the end of the day, we will announce, we will raffle it live, who won the Razor Carcarius. And again, that is www.facebook.com slash Pro Gaming Series, not the PGS just of PGS Rift official group. That's a different um, page. Yeah, yeah. All right. So before we get into the summer's rift, we're gonna take this short break. And we are back. Again, this is a smart prepaid GameX 
Pro Gaming Series 2015 Spring Season Finals. This is a best of five series. This is game two between GameX War Gods and Mineski Globe. So for the blue team, going to see um, JLC in the top lane Aurelia. Ravain will be our jungle Wukong. Achi will be in the mid lane for that Ari. And in the bottom lane, it's BYY and Stronger. For the Corky and Karma support. All right. Meanwhile, on the red side, we've got Mineski Globe. That's going to be TG in the top lane with the surprising Yorick. Kulit in the jungle with his powerful Sejuani. Yume with his favorite LeBlanc in the mid lane. And on the dual lane, we've got Exo in the well with the Graves and Morgana. Yes, and input actually from Kairu that playstyle playstyle wise, TG would rather go in for a farm heavy for at least a few uh, first early 15, moments of the game yeah, yeah. early moments of the game and just let Colette focus the mid lane Ooh. for Yume to snowball but it's actually an invade coming in from Mineski here One oh thing, my oh but they do get the go oh, stronger it takes so much damage I think he will be forced to flash out mm, not enough yeah I was I was actually expecting him for a dark binding to come in there but this is not something we usually see it's usually war gods doing this one but there might be a dark binding. No, I think they're trying to put in deep wards to anticipate a lane swap possibly. So, yes, all right. Let's see what's gonna happen on in this early game. Didn't burn any summoners just yet, so they were just trading at health there. But they do have a lot of wards actually. So Ooh, surprising, um, early green ward coming in from stronger might actually. Oh, there is a lane swap. There you go. Yeah. Mm -mm. So that's sorry about that. Corky and. Karma against the Yorick there, so, so that should be quite interesting. Are they going to send? Oh, this actually might be a good strategy coming in from War Gods. They can send JLC with Ravain to do the buddy system in the jungle, get JLC to at least level two or three to be able to tank up Ooh. um EXO and Noel's damage. But nice, there you go. It actually might be a three buff start, but the ward from Minasi Globe does see. These three members of War God, so this does give them the information that the lane swap has commenced, and a triple buff start might be possible for War Gods. Yeah, what a worth it ward there. Spotting out three members immediately from War Gods just spelled out their whole strategy, I guess. Yes. Although they weren't able to anticipate that lane swap, but at the same time, they know now what the strategy is here coming in from War Gods. TG with an early green ward here will place it over. I believe in the red side, oh, but the timely invade from Colette, Ooh. but here comes Ochi going in onto Yume, and Yume just distortioning back for a little bit of love. Oh wow, TG's getting completely harassed right now. Alright, I see right now, in the red side area, it is JLC trying to go in against Colette. Colette is taking a good chunk of damage oh from the Brumble back, but at what cost? JLC is already to have HP already only at level 1. And Colette does have Aww. that smite, so the strategy for War Gods has been immediately countered by Mineski. Wow, they read through that like a book. Yeah, well, great job for Mineski to adopt so well into that game. They they got hold of the information in just a few few short moments when the Warji was present, and immediately after, they were able to respond and take down that red buff. And that shows one of the most important qualities of a pro team is to be able to adopt the information you receive during yes, the game. Yes, true. Very, very true. But now, it's actually stronger. Oh, actually, both ADRs, or rather both dual laners, are focusing on getting early pushes. Yeah. And not freezing their lanes. So this is saying to us that they want to kill these towers first, and then put their ADs back into the bottom yeah. lane. To, to have control of that dragon. Exo and Noel do have the numbers advantage in the bottom area to be able to help Colette with that dragon but here Whoa. comes the gang into the mid lane Achi did get in that ethereal chains and was forced to flash out yeah that is gonna be stronger they're roaming around not sure what he plans to do here he might just be putting in a ward or a snare but it doesn't seem like he'll succeed there yes questionably though stronger did went in for a exhaust and is roaming but what you'd want to actually do is ignite in my opinion if you're not going to have a buddy system for ganking but here comes Ravain in the side we're going on to Yume right now Yume distortions gets that ethereal chain and ooh stronger there very nice Q did force the flash out from Yume but in the top lane VYY is just getting hammered down by TG 
the roaming stronger did force the flash, but BYY is having a pretty tough time in this top lane. Yeah, he was getting harassed, I think, a bit by the goals. Though so comparing CS, the AD carries are both even. It's JLC right now. Ouch. That's having quite a hard time in the bottom lane. That they, it was a good idea, I think, to send Stronger down to help JLC because, like we saw in game one, when Irelia gets going, she really hurts. But if she's put behind by the bottom lane here of Mineski, JLC won't be able to be the anti carry that GameX War Gods wants him to be. It's actually a misplay from War Gods. If they want JLC to become a carry Irelia uh, late or uh, this early oh. on, but oh, BYY takes so much damage! There's the flash Q from TG, but ni nice bait there from BYY oh. actually. There you go. I was actually talking about if they want to have JLC um, snowball early on to this game, they would send Ravain into the bot lane to, to have a 2v3 lane. But oh, there's a Dark Binding misses! Smokestein was there to just annoy JLC and Stronger. And again, back to what I was saying, put Ravain into that aggressive stance for JLC. But I guess it was in their plan to have VYY in the very dangerous situation against TG and that just gave TG a little bit of let's say aggression too much aggression over aggression rather that forced BYY or rather gave BYY that first blood yeah I was actually gonna say that BYY was probably underestimating TG's damage but turns out it was a bait and TG didn't have any wards around this area so good job from them to get that first blood which I think is very important for VYY considering he wasn't really able to be that carry Ezreal in game one yes so it looks like they're trying to go, but here comes the aggression by Yume. He's already Ooh. level 6, and Achi, no spirit rush, will die to the ignite. Here comes Ravain, one more hit. Might have killed Yume there, but ooh, Macolette with the counter gank just dashes in, just uses that flail, flail of the northern winds to scare out this fire Wukong. Yeah, he actually did flash in as well, just to save Yume, so Colette really investing a lot into that blood lane considering he uses flash to save the blanc from dying yeah. with that sliver of health granted though that you may got a kill and has a cs advantage against archie yes we were expecting this like we were saying earlier in the pick and ban phase we saw in the clash just earlier you was able to solo kill archie so easily dodge his q dodge his charm everything so i really think that Ravain has to help him out and invest more into ari so that yes. she can assassinate exo and you yes but now there's a problem happening in this top lane. Yes, BYY did get in that early first blood, but TG has so much sustain and <laughs> the crystalline flask and health pots is just letting him have so much more mana to spam out his ghouls and be able to harass BYY while keeping himself healthy. And BYY should have a CS advantage if actually Stronger was there to help him. JLC not looking it's actually looking well but again TG's just winning in this top lane yeah there's yeah. really not a lot that VYY can do there's not much rage advantage either because like you said those goals are completely annoying and Earth is just so sad right now he's just Look at getting that. smacked out on his little Earth butt with his goals <laughs> spatula in hand yeah <laughs> oh my gosh it's it's the real SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is a very good pick, I guess, coming in from TG and then the lane swap. I guess it's good that Stronger decided to invest a lot to help out JLC, but even with the investment of helping out JLC, he's still behind a bit in terms of CS, and that makes it quite worrisome if TG's just allowed to keep doing this to VYY in that top lane. Yes, true. And now. With a 500 gold lead, doesn't look as much as it would be, but in terms of how the game is progressing, it's slowly looking to the favor of Mineski. Right now, there is a Dragon Start here, and VYY is in the top lane. He can't do anything, he can't teleport, and this will be a free Dragon if ever I saw one. Uh, so, good call coming in from Mineski. They definitely totally outplayed Wargas with that one. They had no vision around the area. The only ward, in fact, they had was right here in the tri bush. So it's quite unfortunate. And BYY wasn't there either to help out with damage. So yes. even if they had vision. And with that dragon, it's actually giving TG more burst into the top lane. There's Ooh, an engage the onto JLC. JLC is taking a good chunk of damage 
but here comes Stronger trying to Ooh, go wow. into JLC forces him to flash out. Ravain is level 6 here, they can do it, misses that collateral damage, here comes Ravain, he will knock up Noel, he will knock up Exo, Stronger gets the kill though, JLC takes a huge chunk of damage, he's just going to back off, there's no respond for the bottom lane of Mineski, but VYY, ooh, here comes oh, Clint, and wow. oh my gosh, he got ripped apart, Exo takes a lot of damage, a whole lot of damage, he's just getting chased, and Ravain gets the kill, so simultaneous gank coming in from both teams, but I just have to give it to Colette for having a flashier kill. Yeah. <laughs> the snipe with the glacial prison. Yes, that usually that's prison. used for like a three-man prison, but there he just smacked him in the face with the prison. Yes, but while that is happening, look at you may go onto Ooh. Achi, but Achi with the power of that fox. What does the fox say? <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> he had a lot to say in that one. <laughs> Earlier yes. we saw Yume was able to dodge most of the skills, but in that case, Ochi showed the aggression, and it's really important to... That's how you distinguish, I guess, a, a good Ari from a great one. It's knowing yes. when to pull out your skills. You can't just go EQ everywhere. Yeah, and it'll you can't willy-nilly um, just... You know, use it out like you've said. Yeah, exactly. Also, a little bit of a trivia. If you, if you could go back to Ochi, this skin is based off Mozilla Firefox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I believe Google Chrome was Cro uh, Chrome Ramus. Or, sorry, or rather. Oh, yeah. It is Chrome Ram. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, then there was Internet Explorer Ezreal. Yes, Internet yeah, Explorer Ezreal. Safari Israel. Caitlin. Safari Caitlin. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember who's the uh, Chrome one. I think it's Ramus. I think it's Ramus. Yeah, but. But Ramus has a Bowser skin if you actually look at it. Oh my. The King Ramus. But here comes an engage. On to Colette here. Oh, she is in the sideline, but. Oh, oh! It actually gets it. They do get the Dark Binding onto Stronger, but there's too many members of War Gods to be able to counter this out. Very nice pick there. On to Colette. This is the kind of War Gods we were looking for. We were looking for their early aggression and this kind of lead. Earlier in game one, they didn't pick the right champions. They didn't play it out well. But this time, Stronger. With that Rome, with the Karma, we saw the effect of this yesterday when they used it against IPT and he's showing it again. Those chains really, really put fear and Ochi is being the carry that he needs. He's slightly getting back into the game, still a little bit behind in terms of CS, but he's still the assassin. Yes. He is spotted out by these two wards here and Yume along with Noel are positioning themselves into the bottom lane. Bottom lane. So now... War Gods, oh, but here comes Ravain, does have that speed boost, but nothing happens. Oh, wow. But is here, he gets the Glacial Prison onto Achi. Ravain is caught out, he uses a Cyclone, but nobody knocks is knocked up. Yume, one more hit, no, Ravain still lives. JLC was there for the teleport, but was able to do not a whole much. What an intense clash. I thought Ravain was gonna die, but such an even clash, he backed out immediately. I thought it was a misplay from Colette because he bumped his head into this wall, yes. but it was just to reach the ult, just in time to lock in Ochi. It was also slightly miscommunicated because we saw that there was some hesitation from Yume. He was kind of chilling over at this area, but JLC hacking at EXO right yes. now. Oh my gosh, EXO takes this huge chunk of damage. Ooh. He will die, and that's why we want to see the Aurelia <laughs> for JLC. Now BYY already uses... Flash right. and heal. He's taking a huge chunk of damage. Just try to get it. One oh, more hit. Oh, oh, oh. but no, the uh, red buff actually killed. Yeah. Byy there. And very awkward because Colin just flashed, but missed. Actually, he Not tried good. to flash in. He, I believe, um, Byy w had a frozen debuff on him, so mm. a permafrost would have killed Byy yeah. there. Oh my. Now Ravain trying to go in on the TG. Oh my. TG's actually underestimating. Super. Yes, and. Oh, one more hit! Ooh. Yes, he actually gets it! What a play oh, there from Ravain. It's... He needs to run away now. Run away. Oh, but he got spotted out there. He's trying to do what he can to burn out that cooldown. And yes, he does. <laughs> oh my gosh, Ravain just walking on a <laughs> plank. I it. thought TG was going to drag him down to the grave. Yes. But it turns out <laughs> that monkey is just a little bit too annoying. <laughs> yes. He was actually swinging vines, and none of those vines break, break, broke for him. Yeah. <laughs> Good job there from Ravain. Showing yes, his... But again, oh Jesse going on to Axel. Axel takes a huge chunk of damage. He will get a little bit damage. One more hit, actually, but no, the soul shackles. Oh my. Stop him in his tracks. He doesn't have his ultimate to finish off JLC. 
JLC doesn't have these just sanded blades. Oh my gosh! If someone had a Jinx, oh, this would be the perfect <laughs> time to use it, but no! Why, people? Why? <laughs> JLC's thinking, I wish I had a Super Mega Death Rocket right now. <laughs> yes, but that's. Wow, well, they forced two summoner spells as well. They forced the Flash from Noel and the Heal from Exo. And with Dragon coming in in around 15 seconds, they are going to be at a disadvantage. They won't be able to pull off the Flash Soul Shackles. And Exo slightly more um, vulnerable without the heal. So in a team fight, this could be quite scary for Mineski. Yes, though looking at the damage output, for, for both ADRs, none of them have their first core item. So in terms of damage spike, I would put it in favor of DIY just because of his Sheen proc having a little bit more damage. But they're still... Ooh, my. Oh, but Irvine gets that knock up. He will die, but they do get the kill onto Yume. Very worthy trade there. TG, oh wow, the cooldown of his ultimate just came back up so bad there for Colette. Oh my. They're going oh, to get TG there, there with a 4 for uh, run, run, 4v1, run, run, run. but TG now is the Undertaker, so he's going to <laughs> take you downtown. But stronger, stronger than that. Oh, stronger! Yeah. Ah. Oh my stronger. gosh, <laughs> he is stronger. <laughs> my gosh, wow, it, what, it just what happened to Ravane a while ago is what happened to Stronger right now. It's making me... I clench my face and <laughs> after this um, finals I might have like a weird um, deformed face yeah <laughs> from all of these tense um, all-ins from one cha wow. uh, one player but wow flash coming in from war gods <laughs> none of them died I was afraid that Ravain made a mistake it was a bit awkward because he found the ward look it has like one hit bar left and it was like what do I do there's two members here do I take the ward or not then he got caught out of it but but his teammates with a response were able to delete three members and Ochi back into the game right now. Yes, and you may actually questionable distortion in. Yeah, yeah. He got caught up with Ravain's cyclone and Noel actually put the cyclone onto Colette, I believe. Yeah. And that just gave Yume to these monkey uh, <laughs> earth um not uh manatee rather. Yeah. Yeah. Combination yeah, of Warlord. I think he got overconfident with the lead against Ochi, but this might be a kill. There's Yume trying to go Ooh. in. He actually dodges it. Dodges oh, wow. so many skill shots. Oh, the my. three man <laughs> cyclone. Four man cyclone right now. We're just knocking up, but Ooh. JLC isn't here though. But Ravain gets the kill. Where is BYY? He's in the sideline. Going to get TG. One more hit. He gets it. TG. Oh, sorry. That was Exo rather. Or sorry. Um, Noel and Yume rather. But Exo goes down. I was actually predicting the <laughs> kills I was at while I was shoutcasting. <laughs> so that's four to four to nothing. Stronger oh was gosh. as slippery as his fellow monkey friend. <laughs> that was insane. Let's take a look at that replay right there. So Noel getting slightly caught out, and then the three members coming in, two members coming in to respond. Ravain gonna get go out, but stronger sidestep. Let's dodge that chain. Then let's One, dodge that two, dark binding. Three. Oh yeah. So awesome. he's just like, you guys can't touch this. I'm stronger than you. Can't touch this. Then that's gonna be a cyclone coming in. There's the ult coming from Exo, but not enough damage to burst anyone down. Ravain slips just because he's a monkey slipping away. Then there's Yume trying to finish him off, but Ochi again, his damage should not be underestimated. Exo gets so low from that one Q with a double proc, and there's gonna be a charm. There's gonna be TG getting very low. Yume goes down as well against Vyy, and at this point, the Earth just has his meal. Yes. Cooks his meal with a spatula. <laughs> <laughs> and you could say that with that clash, what comes around goes around. Yeah. Ah, wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> it's karma, people. That's what karma yeah. is, is. Stronger is really stronger at the moment. Yes, there's actually a 6,000 gold lead already for War Gods. 20 minutes into the game, 13 kills to 4. And that's not actually what is um, the most significant thing for War Gods. It's their... Tower lead. Not actually tower lead. They're, Three, they're let's say, team fight mechanics. Ooh. Oh, oh my god! The charm on the team! Oh, so you may rather. Oh, and wow, Ribby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. I was thinking the Ocho was gonna get the kill. There are two things that Wargons can show off from today. Number one, stronger <laughs> with the slippery place, and number two, Ribbane with the KS. It's kill secure, it's not kill steal. <laughs> Say whatever you want, that was a KS, man. <laughs> <laughs> but he gets the charm onto Noel there. Noel uses the black shield to try and soak up a little bit more damage. Uh, JLC is a at a 
level disadvantage against TG though. Crivane was like, nope. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I just can't get over that. He was like, yeah. one HP, and Crivane's just like, bang. Oh, but Archie! <laughs> what auto attack to stop Exo from oh. recalling? But here comes Colette on two. Oh, oh, but he misses the glacial prison. <laughs> that was like a centimeter away from yeah. the grade. And with uh. that play coming in from Colette. Um, in the bottom lane, Viva oh, wow. strong, but here comes very low. JLC going in on to cheat TG oh, yeah. and Macolette, they will die. TG not even having to use that ultimate. Yeah, that was a bit over-aggressive JLC there. Felt like way too fat and anti-carry, but he can't take down both those tanks just yet. But as this game is progressing, War Gods, um, in my opinion, are adapting more and more yeah. to how Mineski is playing. They're baiting out Mineski to be aggressive, and that's what Mineski wants. They want to be aggressive, but then there's just so much counter engage coming in from War Gods that they're, how, how do I say this, um, capitalizing from the aggression that Mineski are giving off. Yeah, and oh, he put a pink ward there. And just, get, there you go. Really have to give it to JLC, Revain, and Stronger. Out of nowhere, they up their game. So much stronger dodging all these skill shots, very effective in all the lanes. Ravain almost never dying <laughs> whenever he comes in for that cyclone. And JLC also doing pretty well with the Aurelia. So, War Gods really leveling up in this game, too. And that's what we were talking about is that War Gods also shaky earlier on the BGS, but they are also able to adopt. And it seems like both Mineski and War Gods both have that pro team ability of being able to adopt to the game. Yes. Now, the question is for Mineski. Do, did the Yorick pick pay off? Because we were well, we were talking mm. a while ago yeah. that Yorick needs to be in that heavy farm lane first, get good items, and then just be an Undertaker. Yeah, he's zero uh, so four right now. Yeah, and he's zero four. He has been dying, but he hasn't been he hasn't been taking anyone to his grave as well. Yeah, sadly, no one joining him and his goals in the grave of sadness, <laughs> sadness. in the grave of zero four. <laughs> But I guess that was what we were talking about earlier. We said that VYY was pushing out the top lane pretty heavily, and I think that's what they wanted to do. They don't want TG to be a happy goal man up in top lane. They immediately took away that first tower, and that gave JLC the chance to just duel TG. And honestly, without Kulit there, he could pretty much face TG. Dragon is now live, and both top laners do have their... Ooh. Teleports, TG taking a huge damage from JLC, he uses oh, wow. his ultimate immediately, but JLC is now running for his life, he's waiting for that ultimate to um, time out. He did use his Transcendent Blades to be able to um, sustain back from it, but Achi split pushing in the mid lane, will he get anything out of it? Yeah, both top laners have uh, teleport right now, but the scuttle is on War Gods, oh no, rather on Mineski's side. Oh, it's gonna be this quite dangerous right this now. It's a bad position coming in from War Gods. Don't have their front tank Ooh. liners. Ooh, VYY here. Forced to back out because of the teleport. Coming in from TG. Here's Ooh. a messy miss. Flash misses that glacial prism, but Exo with the kill onto TG. Oh, sorry. Oh, Exo with the kill onto JLC, and now TG dies. And VYY will die straight after into the hands. Oh, on wow. Of um, Colette there, and that was a three, two, four, four, three for two, five. Uh, two, three four, for four. four. Yes. Three. Oh, 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 what an ace, though. <laughs> that was a three, three for nothing, I believe. And wow, can we get a War replay of that? It was, it was a messy fight. I wasn't. Yeah. So let's should go and take over a look at that replay. So both top laners, they are teleporting, and Colette in a slightly awkward position there, but he is gonna back out. And then there's JLC. We catch him coming in, and then. TG teleports away because he's solo. The Glacial Prison does not hit anyone. He threads the needle in between all the members. JLC immediately out of the fight, though. And then that's going to be Noel. Very low, though. He is going to back out immediately. That's VYY putting down the damage that he can before he goes down. But Ochi at full health and pretty much 70 to 60% mana there. He's able to get a double kill. Exo's left all alone. Stronger with the burst takes him down. And just a little bit later, Yume thinks he's safe. But the Fox says something about that. He actually got charmed to the face. Wow. But, um, back to that replay a while ago, the most- Oh, but here comes the- oh. guy. On to Colette! Colette does have- Oh, he actually smited that to give himself more health. Nice yeah. play there. JLC trying to go in onto Exo and Noel here. And, again, back to what I was saying, Exo did get that kill onto JLC, 
but he was out of the clash because of the cyclone and then he was just being chased by Ravain that he was forced out of it so early on that he wasn't dealing enough damage at all. Yeah, that's true. And then BYY, even though if he died, did did um get a huge chunk of damage yeah. onto the members of um Mineski. So it's all about how they utilize their damage dealers. Yeah, that's true. And yeah, that's just that's just what happened there. TG did wasn't able to use the ultimate onto Axo. Yeah, we also have to well. point out that the vision right now coming in from Mineski, oh, rather, War Gods is really quite deep into the jungle. They've got so many wards around. Oh, they're going to go in onto TG here! TG thought that he was safe under his turret, but he dies. He's at 0, 06 and 3 already, trying to use what he can with his ultimate, but to no avail. And this looks like a Ooh. push, but oh, Stronger will finally die to Yume right there. A little bit of a face check. DIY getting chased by Colette. Colette doesn't have his great glacial prison anymore, but Yume is here. He will die too! BYY there, and Yume will oh. not get the kill on to BYY while CJ's soloing this bottom lane, and Exo can't do anything. He will get stuck. Oh, oh. Here comes Archie. Doesn't get... Oh, wow. Doesn't even need the charm. The charm or the help from Archie. JLC just man-moding. Um, Exo here, the bottom lane. Oh, oh, God, just switching around kills. They take top, they take bottom, they take everything. They're taking the towers right now. It's 7 to what? 0. They're okay, there you go. Wow, it's a surrender. Wow. Eddie, wow! Coming in <laughs> Grave from Mineski. That was such a good game from War Gods. Oh, wow. So, early on in the game, game 1, Mineski looked like they had it in the bag. And War Gods comes back and slaps them right in the <laughs> face. They say, no! You don't have this in the bag. We're still in this. Yes. And looking at the final score, wow! All the carries, their KDAs are all beautiful oh my in this gosh, game. Gosh, that was so bloody. Ochi five one, Revain five one, GLC three two, VYY eight three, and Stronger with eleven assists. Meanwhile, that's a not so happy TG really. Yes. Also, yeah, it did. It really didn't pay off for them. Um, it did look like it was going in favor of Mineski early on. Yeah. Because. TG was one v in a 1v1 situation against BYY and he was actually winning. But then we were talking about what Ravain can do for War Gods and he delivered. He packaged his um jungleness <laughs> <laughs> and gave it all gave it to War Gods, giving them so many assists. Look at that, he's already five or he is five one in twelve already. Man, he's that been kill participation everywhere. Yes. is insane. He, so, actually, he actually got kills in the top lane for VYY and in the bottom yes. lane for JLC. Yeah, mid and then lane too. He kills. He kills secured for yeah. Ochi. <laughs> the monkey was in all parts of the jungle, really. Yeah, he was ooh, ah, ah, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so Lion's not really the king of the jungle for this one, and Ravain yes. levels up for game two. So, wow, what a game for you guys! That was the second game oh. of this best of five, the finals between <laughs> Mineski and War Gods. So now it's one for one and. At wow. this point, it's unpredictable. Once again, game one, War Gods totally gets stomped, and at the same time, they stomp Mineski back in game two. I'm, ch I'm chanting two for two. Two <laughs> for two. This is insane. Two for this two. might just reach game five, guys. So do watch out. We have so much left in store yes. for you guys. Actually, Woo. these two teams have so much left in store for you. Explosive fights, mechanical plays everywhere. And again, we'd like to remind you guys that sometime during this best of five, we're going to give back to you viewers of with course. the Razor Carcarius. And my meme face. <laughs> so let's just take a look at the mechanics one more time, guys. So again, the shoutcasters will announce the uh, moment when the registration forms are open. When they do open, immediately go over to the Pro Gaming Series Facebook page. And after that, just sign up the registration form provided within 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, the registration form will close. And at the end of this best of 5, we will announce who wins the Razor Carcarius. Yes, the last of the yes. three coming in for this watch and win promo. Alright, so that's it for this game too. Yes, and wow. the action doesn't stop here. Yes. It's not the last yes, of indeed. three games. There's still three Eba. games to go possibly. Yes. So, Hopefully. Yeah, so we're just going to take a short break in just a while. Again, it's been an honor with these two games. This is yes. GS Amplifier. And I'm GS Asterai with an eye. And we'll be right back. Be right back.